temperature phase and Spock with the high temperature phase, for example, right? And this is super revolutionary thought that uh, Juan Carasquia and Roger Melko had, in, had back in 2017, that in the end, it can just be an image recognition problem. So now, instead of doing some clustering algorithm on our configurations, we can just take the configurations, label them phase A, phase B, like we labeled Star Trek and Star Wars for the one zero vectors, like we just saw how we were updating the loss function on this minimal example. That makes a zero difference for the algorithm. And we can label, we can label these things just as well. Since then, there was a huge progress in this field, but in the end, things will always be looking like this. That you have, um, that you have uh, some kind of image and you can feed it into the network that will classify the image for you. Um, again, let me then maybe at this point re-ask you this question I was asking you before. So now you don't know yet if it works. We are going to persuade ourselves in a second, but let's say that it does. So this takes away this problem that was mentioned before from the audience, that not every, not every, problem is simple enough to solve with the clustering algorithm. Probably you can believe me that if I can distinguish really sophisticated differences between different breeds of dogs with the AI image classification, for sure I can classify the two phases, right? So then again, like is the physics solved now or is there some remaining challenges with this? Great one, another one. Yeah, that's a good question, right? So now I sort of, and I will in a second, serve you on a silver platter, platter Monte Carlo configuration that someone generated for you. But yeah, the question is, what if you don't have this, right? So there will be, there are still some, there are still some remaining challenges. Uh, I made some programming exercises for you. I hope that's fine with everyone. Did you bring your laptops? Or do we have like one laptop per three people at least? We do, right? So let me, I will just explain a little bit and then I will, then I will give you a link. So classifying this icing configurations that we look at at the beginning is a, uh, is actually in a machine learning language, super, super simple problem. And the neural network that does that is written in a programming package PyTorch, literally just like this. You write your linear layer that takes 900 because the lattice is 30 times 30. Then it feeds it into the 32 neurons in a second layer. And then we map on this binomial distribution of, of phase A and phase B, so we go from 32 neurons to two neurons. That's it, super, super simple. It's, it's this kind of, you know, sophisticated artificial intelligence problem, but what you actually need is uh, three lines of code. Uh, you will have this written down from, from us, and uh, yeah, you can experiment. You can experiment with all the different network architectures. And what you are going to recreate at the end of this notebook is the plot from this, uh, from this uh, mm, Karaskia and Melko paper that tells you that if you plot the output layer of your network, you put the probability of being in one phase and probability in the other phase. They exactly intersect. At the, at the phase transition temperature. And this is the kind of plot that you can reproduce with this super, super simple neural network that, that, just has a, that just has the three lines of code that I showed you. So let's do that. If you go to my webpage, either you can go Eliška Greplova slash ICTP or in the news on the front of my website, I also have a link. In the, in the updates, let me open it up. So you arrive to the website and then on top of the news, there is a ICTP ML school. 
and then you look at the notebook one. And it will open in Google Colab. Um, if you are new, to, so if you want to work in the notebooks, you want to save a copy in Drive or save a copy in GitHub. Just, you know, duplicate the notebook because you are not allowed to make changes in mine. So, so you don't lose your changes. Then I will super, super quickly walk you through it. And then for the remainder of the time, I just let you experiment. What you will realize when you look at this notebook, there is just some introduction about this um, icing model phase transition, if you want to reread it. You will realize that a lot of it, it's like uh, data preparations and preparing labels and plotting the shapes and so on and so forth. There is a lot of code that you don't have to worry about so much. You just have to pre press uh, shift enter to run these cells. Um, basically, when we were setting this code for you up, we mirrored this like a super basic PyTorch tutorial for a binary classification in a way that everything is written as a class that has a, that you can just, that is like a data independent and you can just reuse it. Our goal being that you have a piece of code that you can then just stuff a new data set into for your own machine learning application. So there is sort of a lot of written down, but you can just run through it for now and then you can save it and you have, have it for later if you wanna make your own neural network. And then the main thing I was just showing you comes here in the step three where you set up your model. So what you can do now is to is to, you know, maybe change the number in the, in the middle layer or add more layers. Um, yeah, that's it. Then you compile the model, you pick your optimizer. Here you need to remember this learning rate if you wanna experiment with that. And then again, after that, the training is a predefined definition for you that is just like a, yeah, problem independent. So you can copy paste it to your next problem. And when you are done training, you will get some nice accuracy and loss function plots. And eventually you will be also able to plot this kind of plot and see the phase transition. Um, for this, this is the first notebook in the school. So everything is pre-written down for you. So if you are new to Python or new to machine learning, you can just, you know, read or read on the cells. Uh, if you are already proficient, then, you know, go to town and get a better accuracy than me because I didn't try very hard, so. Also, let's see how many questions we have about the code. Now my group has to raise their hands. Ruven, you too. Uh, they are here to help you with the, with the coding problems. So let's just, let's just spend 15 minutes, read through this and, uh, and yeah, see if you can make some changes, make it work, ask us questions.
Okay, so we are nearing your scheduled coffee breaks. I walked around. I feel like everyone managed to open it and got it working. If I, if you did not and I missed you, come talk to me. And I hope that like running this few cells and looking at how it actually looks like to build this kind of classifier, that you got some that you got some idea how it works if you're new or you got to make some yeah better layers with a good accuracy feel free feel free to come talk to me about your code if you want and uh, yeah let's take a 40 minute coffee break and then we will be back with some more complicated layers <laughs> Thanks, Eliska, for this uh, very uh, pedagogical lecture. Um, yeah, so I just asked to stay to take a picture. Um, maybe you can take the picture here in front, uh, Victoria. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you fit everyone here. I think so, right? 